Um, just a short encouragement, just a word of encouragement um, uh, to the body of Christ. Uh, last week, we were looking at um, how God intends to colonize our hearts, to colonize our, 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 our minds, that we may be uh, focused on Him. Amen. And um, on picking up from there, I would like everyone that is listening to have a mind that is Christ conscious. Mm -hmm. Amen. To be Christ conscious so that you are God centered <clears throat> in all that you do. Like I was saying in the morning, uh, your coming to church should not be inspired by the man preaching. Are you with me? Your coming to church or any other fellowship for that matter should be born from the strength of the understanding of what Christ did for you as an individual. Amen? So when you come and you begin to bless the name of the Lord in praise, in worship, in dancing, in whatever the Spirit of the Lord quickens you to do, it should be born from a place of understanding of what Christ did on the cross. It is called the place of gratitude. Amen. For being grateful for what he did. So if you look for an opportunity to always look back to him and say thank you. Do you know when someone gives you something that's so priceless and so valuable, you can say thank you ten times. Even when you look and say, oh, yeah, honestly, really, thank you. Oh, wow, really for me? Oh, wow, thank you. You keep acknowledging what the person has done. And this is the posture of our heart. Amen. The posture of, of thanksgiving. And from there, I want us to um, remind us not to live for a moment. So if you're looking for the title, it's a very short exhortation titled, Don't Live for the Moment. Amen? Don't live for what? For the moment. Um, I, 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 every time I, I have a, a, a moment to myself, there's, there's a strong nudge in my spirit, and it's like I'm, I keep being reminded of the fact that He is coming soon. He is coming soon. So now I'm thinking: Am I just thinking of these thoughts, or am I just because? Uh, 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 yes, of course, we are all waiting for the return of the Lord. Amen. Amen. But it's like there's, there's a heightened emphasis in my spirit to say he is coming soon. He is coming soon. And then I think, okay, if he is coming soon, what should we be doing as the bride? You know what I mean? Preparing for him. Hallelujah. Preparing for him. So, There are things that um, the devil has established and he has perfected them in, throughout generations. One of the things that the devil does to a soul of a man, I taught us what a soul is, amen? To a soul of a man is to bring like hastiness. Haste, 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 being like rushing, yes, you know. He, 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 he brings this mindset like, you know, you are lagging behind or like, you know, um, you see, you're not doing well, so you need to you know, improvise, you need to, you know. And um, there's, there's, there's a... a, a, a I don't know if I can say frustration, or there is a mostly uh, an inner longing to live for now, yeah. for a moment. And the other thing that the devil does is he quickens frustration. He quickens frustrations. And to someone who is a believer, and who calls upon the name of the Lord. The devil creates a sense in the mindset 
of wanting to blame God because we think because we are believers and we have trusted in the Lord, then the Lord is supposed to protect us all the way, and which he does. Amen? But time and again, we find that, we find that the manifestations that are negative seem to outweigh the manifestation of what is good. Amen? And, and, and there's a temptation in our hearts to question, but I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian, I'm praying. I, and when, you, when we assess ourselves from our own perspective, we go like, I don't think I'm in sin. But, uh, <laughs> how is it that I seem to be moving from one challenge to the other? And God, where are you? You know, I, I don't know if, are you understanding me? Yes. Yeah. You know? So it, 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 there's a, the, the, the devil creates a situation as if it's God's fault. There's a temptation for believers to think that God is not caring about their essence or their activities. Are you with me? And because of that, there's a temptation to begin to improvise and begin to work things in our own strength and begin to, uh, you know, patch and, 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 and do, you know, even when the, we know it's not right, but, you know, but I've been waiting on God for this long and he seems to be silent. So, well, I, I might just as well fix it myself. It's that hastiness that the, quick, the devil has quickened. And in most cases, men begin living for the moment. But this morning, I want us to shift our perspective. Amen? I want us to shift our perspective and have a, I don't know, what, what is long-sighted? People that wear glasses. You, what, what are you? What's, what's, what's long sighted? So, long sighted, you can see far. far uh -huh. Okay, so can we be, uh, can we talk about long sighted? Yeah, so meaning you can only see far. But it's, also, it's good to see, because even as much as you can see far, that means that you can't see here. You do see here. 2020 vision. 2020 vision. <laughs> okay, okay. Hallelujah. 20 what? <laughs> oh God! That's a dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> and they always tease me. They always tease me about my jokes. <laughs> okay, so can we go to Hebrews twelve? Remember, um, don't leave for the moment. Can you look at someone and tell them, don't leave for a moment? Amen. Okay. Hebrews 12, uh, verses 14 to 17. Hebrews 12. Uh, Hebrews 12. Hebrews is in the Old Testament, page 55. <laughs> Pauline is awake, and I know <laughs> Sister Susan is awake. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I know you know. Uh, Hebrews is in the New Testament. So can we begin, Sister? Oh, Sister. You, wow. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. I almost called out the wrong standing name. Standing in for me today. Yeah, no worries. Thank God you bless you. You've got a cold. Uh, looks like you. Uh, it's high fever. Oh, I think. it's well. Yeah. It is well. Okay. Amen. 14, Sir Jen, please help us from, okay. tw from uh, Hebrews 12, from 14 to 17. Follow peace with all men and holiness, mm. without which no man shall see the Lord. Mm. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, mm. lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, mm. and thereby many be defiled. Mm. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person, mm. as Esau, who, from, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Mm. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Hallelujah. This, this makes a sad reading. This makes a sad reading. And I want to encourage you this week, as you do your devotion, I, I know you've got your personal devotion and your personal 
as scriptures. Can you look at Hebrews 12? Can you study Hebrews 12? Amen. What I want you to, to understand is that I want you to picture a church that has received a letter as an epistle. Now they are reading through. Are you with me? So they are, they are, they are receiving, I mean, they are reading through the, the letter. And what, what, what the writer is trying to say is, follow peace with all men, okay? And holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Now, there's a misconception in the body of Christ. People confuse salvation with holiness. Huh? Salvation is not holiness. Huh? Salvation is what the Lord imputes unto us. He gives us for free. By, by virtue of believing in him. When we believe that he is Lord and he died for us, and we are convinced from inside ourselves, he accounts to us as being saved because we have believed upon the name of the Lord. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Holiness is now an act of allowing Jesus to become Lord and God of our lives. Amen. Holiness is the act of walking in obedience to that which God has prescribed for us now that we are saved. Yes, amen. Are you with me? Yeah. Whereas salvation is free, holiness is something that a saved man works towards. Yes. <laughs> amen. Are you with me? Yes. So, salvation is free. But now that you have come into that crucible of his mercy by the blood, because what necessitates salvation is the blood which purchases, which makes as a token for you and I to come into salvation. Now that we have come, we need to begin to find out what is demanding of us. And the more we obey, the more we journey, we journey in him, in keeping with the word of truth as he has demanded of us, it's attributed to us as holiness, shunning what he demands and declares as evil. Yes. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Yeah. We search what is righteousness so that we can walk away from what is decreed as what? As, as evil. So in our quest to walk right with him, we are walking in holiness. And if you are opening this, book, this, this, this verse and then you see where it says and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That should be sobering. That should be able to open your understanding, to open you, to, to, to shake you up and to wake you up and say, uh, uh, hang on. Yes, I'm saved. But uh, how much have I allowed him to become Lord and God of my life? Are you with me? And then he says, looking diligently. That's English. Huh? Looking what? Diligently. Diligently. So, you, 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 you've come into God, but you don't now begin to slumber and, and slacken. You keep your posture of alertness, looking diligently, lest any man fail, fail of the grace of God. So there is grace provisioned. However, a possibility exists if men slacken, if men slumber and become lukewarm, they can fall from the grace of God. There is grace. Yes. And we are saved by what? Yes. By grace. Yes. However, if we slacken and we, fall, we lose focus, we lose our diligence, the Bible is saying, lest a man falls from what? From the grace of God, meaning there is a possibility. Can I see people that are waiting is written? Yeah. This is getting ready. Yes. Huh? Yes. Lest any root of bitterness springs up, 
trouble. See, it springs up, trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. So now this, this, this is what should begin to, to sober up a believer. Because the devil wants to do everything possible to disqualify us from the rest. Are you with me? And the writer is reminding us to say, sometimes all it takes is bitterness to spring up. And once it takes root, men are defiled. So you, you and I can be looking for sins of fornication, of adultery. And you forget that actually bitterness will defile a man. Because what that bitterness will bring is what? Unforgiveness. And from where God sits, he has forgiven us of our what? Our sins. So if he has forgiven us our sins, what is his expectation? Forgive because we have been what? We've been forgiven. But what will be the root of that? Bitterness. Are you with me? So, we don't live for a moment. We search what the scriptures are and live by what the scriptures are demanding of us. Now, verse 16 is interesting. Verse 16 is interesting. It says, lest there be any fornicator. I, I will skip that one for now. Because sometimes you'll be like, oh, well, I'm not into that. Okay. Or profane person, as Esau, who for a morsel of a meat sold his birthright. Now, this is where I want us to understand why we should not live for a moment. I want you to look at me. Amen. Do we all understand the story of Esau? We understand of how he was hungry. Okay? Hunger with a desire to satisfy the flesh, the tummy. He came from hunting and he was panting, saying is what? He is hungry. And on that basis, he chose to swap his birthright. Huh? His birthright for what? For a morsel of bread or for beans or for lentils. That bread represents what? Food. Okay? What he didn't understand was that his birthright was not valuable for him in that moment as a young boy. Huh? His birthright was to come in, in play when he's an adult and now they come a time for sharing inheritances. Then he would have seen what the birthright meant. But in that moment, he had it, but it was not valuable because it had not come into full manifestation of what it was supposed to be in tomorrow. Are you with me? So he trivialized it and chose to exchange it for a cup of bread, of, 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 of rentals or for bread as the Bible tells us. In other words, for food. This, we are reading it from the New Testament. And the writer is quoting a narration from the Old Testament. Yes. Are you with me? This is a clear example of a man who lived for the moment and had to forego eternity. Are you with me? So, many other times, when we are... So, right now, there are two things that the writer points out to. He says, lest they be any fornicator or profane person. So, he uses two things. And to qualify his statement, he brings in Esau as an example. Okay? So, what happens is in most cases, the devil will create situation that brings panic, that brings a sense of loss to a man. And in that moment, because we lose focusness 
of that long-sightedness, we focus on the need in the moment and the gratification that it will bring. We dive into it, but what, without knowing that our actions are actually messing up our tomorrow. Are you with me? Yeah. Um, I, I want to look for an example that can re, we can relate with. Um, uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, no, yes, in eating or getting angry. Jen, um, I'm going to, get, to focus on you. You, you have your son-in-law here, okay? When this son-in-law of yours uh, fell in love with your daughter, uh, I know you, you knew him because they were friends from the time they were young. Let's take it for example, you didn't like him. Okay? <laughs> okay? Let's take it you didn't like him. Okay? So, you, 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 you could have done everything possible not to, for him not to come into relationship and you squeeze him and everything. But you are you're looking at the moment, okay? Not knowing that if they have come into union, there will be children that will be born from this. And those children will become to call you grandmother. Are you hearing me? Yes. So your, your bitterness... And one of the children that will be born because of his genes, huh? he has to be strong because his destiny, the reason why God wants this woman to come into relationship with this, because there's a gene quality of strength that will make him the best boxer of our generation. Mm -hmm. Now, you're not preview to that. So what you will do is mess up this and probably it may fail off. But if you Wait and see, they come together, a child is born, before you know it, we have got a boxer who is the best boxer in Britain, and the whole world at large, champion and defeated. Why? Because of the genes from the father, and God allowed that to be, but you did not know. So you could have truncated destiny because of your bitterness. Mm. Are you hearing me? So, a young man finds a deal. A deal is just to transfer cocaine from Spain to the UK. Huh? This deal is worth 1.5 million. It only takes one transfer. Once you drop, the money is worth your account, and that account is anonymous. No one will know. It's just within an hour, just one flight from, from, from wherever to the UK, Gatwick, walk away, and you are worth 1.5 million. How tempting is that? We have talked to the person who will be on the counter to check at Gatwick. He's one of our boys. Okay? The person that will be on the scanner is one of our boys. They make a phone call, you talk to them whilst they are at work, they are in, you're in uniform as border security. You talk to them and every, you, you, you are assured to say that they will be there and they are working and the flight takes off. And as life may have it, a stomachache, that guy moves away. The one who is supposed to check your bags, he moves away. You come onto the airport, there's a new blog, he's got no idea who you are and what you are up to. Did you know that ferrying cocaine from wherever and distributing it is a crime? Yeah? Yes. You knew. Was there fear in your heart? Yes. But did you look at the consequences and consider what it will, if, just in case? No. Driven by the moment gratification, you chose to obey and go with it. When, if it's in Malaysia, if it's in Malaysia and they catch a young man or a person with drugs, you are sentenced to death. The Geneva Convention, the UN, they, they've got no say. You are sentenced to what? To death. And yet you, you know that you are only 19. You are only 21. It's the same story with Thailand. Why? 
because a man or a young boy looked for a moment's gratification. I'm giving extreme examples. Are you with me? I'm giving extreme what? Examples. How many times have you chosen to sleep at the expense of prayer? If only you knew that the following morning there's an accident that the devil has purpose and planned. Do you remember the story of Mordecai and Esther? The enemy was planning for one year. He's planning. and How do you know that the following day is the day of the accident? If only you waited in prayer. But sleep and tiredness were of more of essence because generally you are tired. And you chose to rest, not knowing that tomorrow you wake up and you oversleep, jump into the car, things happen. What I'm trying to say is, we need to understand that there is a bigger picture. There is a bigger picture. Many men don't believe in life after. They don't believe in eternal life. It's amazing that even Christians, sometimes you hear men that profess to be Christians saying, we, 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 you know, life is just in this moment. When you die, you die. Are you with me? Do you remember when Jesus was uh, on, 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 on the, in, in, on the um, uh, Mount of uh, Transfiguration? Remember? Yes. We, which witnesses came to help him? I want, I want you to, I want to say it out. Moses and Elijah. Moses and what? Elijah. And Elijah. These guys are coming from dispensation of about 700 years past, or thousands of years past. Are you with me? Yeah. They are coming from thousands, of, their stories are thousands and thousands of years old. By the time they come and manifest before Moses, sorry, before Jesus. When you read the Bible, the Bible says that Moses died and the Lord buried him. Yeah? But on that day, we see this man coming to console Jesus. Now, if you have not journeyed into that, those realities, you may think that life revolves only about now. So you, it's okay for us to do deals. It's okay for us to be taken by the gratification of the flesh today, today, not knowing that eternal life is a reality. The reason why the disciples were killed is because they preached the resurrected Jesus. They were told, you go and speak anything else, but don't speak about him being resurrected. When he rose from the dead, did he have a body? Yes. Uh, I want you to help me. Yes. Did he have a body? Yes. Yes. Okay. Did he wake up with amnesia? No. No. He knew all his disciples. So your mind may be confused, say, when you die, and then when you wake up, you'll be confused. How will you know? When we go to heaven, will we know if my grandmother... It's a, you, you, you uh, like, like, as he is, so shall we be. It's in the scriptures. He had the body, but the body was different. Was it what? A glorified body. And with that body, he found them by the beach, and he says, can you roast fish? They roasted fish and they did what? They did eat. It was a unique body. So these are the things that a man should come to have in his spirit. That we may live for now. We may live for now in the UK. However, our destiny is not here. So there will be a temptation for you to focus on the moment. Like Esau. That's why the writer quotes Esau to be an example who by way of profanity lost eternity. The challenge is that even when he wept and cried he could not get back that which he lost. What was the root cause? Living for a moment. Young girls, young boys, there's a part you go to college. Didi, Chanela, you go to college. And you find girls that are lost. At college, there are groups for Satanists. Yeah. And they, do, they see results from their Satanism. Yeah. At college, there are cocaine. At college, there is weed. At college, there is sexual immorality. You will find everything. Yeah. And you look as if you are losing out because they will tell you how they had a nice time last night. And you may be tempted to live for a moment. You do not know what will happen thereafter. 
Are you with me? You carry destinies. Your eternity is what should be in view. You need to have a long sight. Don't live for the moment. So even when you have an argument as parents or as, as husbands and wives, what is, the, what is the reasonable thing you should do? Huh? Repent. Repent. Yes. And what, what, the other thing is what? Apologize. Apologize. Ask what? Forgiveness. Okay. Because the root of bitterness may do what? May disqualify. Yes, amen. yes, she's your wife. Yes, she's your husband. Yes, he's your son. Yes, he's your daughter. But the root of bitterness may do what? Disqualify. disqualify. So for the sake of eternity, what do we do? We forgive. Yes. Are there your offenses? Yes. If we forgive today, are we going to be offended tomorrow? Yes. Again, one month down the line, we are offended. What do we do? Forgive. Six months down the line, we are, we are offended. What do we do? Forgive. Why? Because it's not how many times the offense, it is the aspect of forgiveness, not to allow bitterness to do what? To take root. Because if bitterness takes root, there is a chance that we may be disqualified. Are you hearing me? I have every belief in my spirit that the Lord is coming. And it's something that is prompting my mind, even when I'm not thinking about the coming of the Lord, I'm getting prompts, the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. I don't know if it's seven years from now. I don't know if it's ten years from now. But what I know in my spirit that the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. So if we take church as a joke, if we let the world teach us of how to live and not live by the scriptures, we are, we are likely to sell our, our destiny. We are likely to sell our eternity. We are likely to sell our eternity. This is a sad reading. Lest they be any fornicator or profane person. These are examples of the things that are likely to make you sell your birthright. Sell your destiny, which is eternity in Christ Jesus. As Esau. Esau is an example of a man who lived for a moment. Are you telling me that if Esau had lived for another one day without eating, would he have died? No. Now help me. Would you have died? No. And then he comes up and says, I am so hungry, I'm about to die. Uh, seriously? I don't care. Just give me beans. Take my birthright. And when the time came for a blessing, you think that maybe Esau, I mean, Jacob swindled him. No, 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 no. He had sold his birthright already. So God allowed that, that, that blessing to come to Jacob because by, by, by covenant in the realm of the spirit, Jacob had taken over. Yes. And no matter how you cry, it's over. It's over. <laughs> Are you with me? The pleasures of life. Sometimes as people, brethren, people don't want to miss out. They don't want to miss out on anything. Even when it's wicked, we just want to be there. Where it's happening, we, so tomorrow we can take selfies and tell everyone that we were there. At the expense of what? Eternal, eternity. At the expense of what? Eternal life. For you know, verse 17, how that afterwards, when he would have inherited a, inherited a blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance and he sought it carefully with tears. You know, we talk about the coming of the Lord and people think that um, we still have time. We will repent when he comes. The parable of the ten virgins is a scary tale and it's an awakening tale. The parable of the ten virgins reminds us that you see, a people that are virgins, meaning they are willing, they, are, they have kept themselves to wait for the Lord. But they are not fully prepared for his return. And he comes when they least expect. And when they want to begin how to prepare for his return, he, he, not anyone else, he closes the door. 
What's the point of fellowshipping like this? But our lives outside there do not reflect the things of the scriptures. What's the point? What's the point of carrying the title, I am a Christian? But we have no reflection of what Christ did like, lived like. This is a man who was on the cross. Beaten beyond description. Naked. And he says, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they have done. Ha! Are you with me? We are a church that keeps grudges. We are a church that is bickering. We have groups. We have, you know, you know where we are here. We have cliques. This group and associates with that group. We are very few. This one likes that. that we are, we are, can we have our eyes set on eternity? Yes. Jesus is coming for what? A pure church. A clean and washed bride. He sought it carefully with tears, but it was too late. Hebrews 4.1. Hebrews 4.1. I meant to take just 30 minutes for this. It's just an exhortation. Sister Jen, if you could help us. Hebrews 4.1. Don't leave for a moment. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it. Hallelujah. Did you hear that? Let us therefore fear. I know the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear. Yes. Yeah? But, but, but what is the Bible telling us here? Fear. Let us therefore fear. The fear is the holy fear. Are you with me? Lest a promise being left us to entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Are, are, are you hearing that? The, the, when we were growing up, um, there is, I don't know, I don't know if, um, um, Brother Darren, did you ever listen to a guy called um, a Eminem? I'm sure probably you might you must have liked. I don't think Sister Susan, Sister Susan, don't worry. It's it's a don't worry. A mom, don't worry. It's a, it's it's a, Eminem. Uh, Pauline, I don't think you would know Eminem. Okay, so it's one of um, uh, guys that was um, he he came into the rap industry in America. As as you know, the rap industry is dominated by black blacks, but he was a white guy. And to come into this industry and take over, it was unheard of. Okay? So he sings a song. And what he sings in that song is on the chorus, you know, you better lose yourself. He says, you know, in this life, you only have one opportunity. So you need to lose yourself in the moment. Okay? Opportunity comes once in a lifetime. In a lifetime. Yeah? Those are the words of the song. Yeah. You better lose yourself in the moment. Okay? You only have one shot in this life. Opportunity comes once in a lifetime. That's the wisdom of Babylon. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. That's the wisdom of Babylon. Because if you check the scriptures, you see men that waited on God for years and years and years and years. And then God in his fullness of time came through. But our generation, even believers, pastors, non-pastors alike, we are sold for a moment. We are, we, we are driven by what we are seeing, what we want to obtain. It doesn't matter what it takes, how much the Bible says no, because we want to obtain, we go for it. This is the only opportunity. It's the same in business. It's the same at the workplace. There are opportunities, yes, that may come 
and prayerfully you seek God. Are you with me? Prayerfully you seek God. And sometimes an opportunity may look so good, but God wants to say no. Are you with me? God will say what? No. But because it looks good, how will my friends think? How will my family know? You, 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 you let go. Because at the end of it all, it may not end well. So the counsel of the writer of Hebrews to the church is, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should come short of what? Of it. So there is a possibility. Now, this is being read to the church, not to the people in the bar. Are you with me? This is to the people in the church. It's an epistle to the body of Christ. So there is a warning. Are you with me? There is a warning that we do not leave for a moment. The devil will orchestrate different things that will look good in our eyes. And in the moment, it looks like we will benefit maximally out of it. But we, when we wait down the line, we will see the consequences and we wish we would never have journeyed that path. Today, I want to encourage the church to walk away from momental gratifications. Amen? Amen. Amen. Walk away from, mom, from, from things that look good in the moment. If you know that they are not of God, resist. The Bible says, resist the devil. And you will do what? He will flee from you. Submit to God first. Submit to God, yes. Submit to God and do what? Resist the devil. So if you are well submitted, you will know what the demands of God are. And because you are submitted and you know what the demands of God are, are you will do what? You will be able to resist it. I, I know this looks good. I know this company makes me feel good. But the things they do, they are constantly swearing. They are constantly out of the will of God. I don't think I can continuously walk with these people. Are you with me? I pray that as a church, we will have the fear of God regardless, and understand what the demands of the scriptures are. My job is to point the church to Christ. That's my job. And to bring an understanding of how men ought to be prepared for the coming of the Lord. There's a point for blessings, there's a point for all manner of all exciting things, but what does this profit a man? If you would gain the whole world yes. and lose what? Salvation. Safeguard your salvation. Yes. Don't live for a moment. I believe this word may not be for everyone, but someone may, may have ministered to. May you choose to forgive. May you choose to look up what Jesus did on the cross and how much he had done for us and remain steadfast not to live for now but focus on his coming. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. Shalom. Shalom. <coughs>